Team Simon will be joining us in a second. Here they are. What? All right, Simon. Yes. Good. Nice Johnny. one. Good weather, mate. Good weather. Thanks very much. I, I didn't hear it in here. I was going through the papers. What's it going to be in the southeast? It's going to be jolly today. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I can't believe you said that. Really? No, I can't believe you said it either. What, Johnny? You're getting all wacky on us, aren't you? Yeah. I like that. What's Do you know what? I can hear a cry. I can hear it. Read all about it. Read all about it. Right. Uh, the mail. Uh, the scam. MPs win thousands from bookies in a betting coup over the election of the new Commons Speaker, uh, for whom they voted, of course. Uh, it was 20 to 1, and, uh, well, obviously, what I'm saying is uh, loads of MPs had a little wager on it. Looks a bit like, were you saying that looks a bit like um, John Thompson in the bottom left-hand corner, weren't you, no, mate? No, it was Donna. Oh, it was Donna <laughs> said that. Sorry, Donna said that looked a bit like John Thompson. OK, let's move through. Uh, <laughs> good avoidance, though. Uh, Mirror, uh, bravo to betrayal, an ex-SAS chi SAS chief told a New Zealand court of his disgust at the portrayal of a Gulf War patrol by former soldiers turned authors. Um, let's move on. Also, there's a Zipped. Lovely picture, uh, we it? gag Anthea on behalf of the nation. Yeah. 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 They're loving that. It's marvellous. Best thing they've ever done, that paper. I wasn't sure if I was reading the paper or if that was just sort of, you know, they just suddenly printed my thoughts. We salute you. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the sun. Uh, this is Queen Sings with a Fish. That's right, the wacky royal as no. Uh, it's, this is uh, the royal duet with the BBC weatherman is tipped to be number one at Christmas. I'm just lying, of course. Uh, this is the Queen has got a comedy fish that sings. It's said to be given to her by one of the royals. They're not revealing the name, but he's a bit of a practical joker. <laughs> Why not just say Prince Andrew? Uh, so it's trouble. Anyway, it, it, she's going to do a duet with the BBC weatherman, and it's tipped to be number one at Christmas, and all proceeds will go to Martin McCutcheon's new trouser appeal. <laughs> uh, there we go. Do you know what? I think I'm going to get in there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, what's this one? OK, uh, men in Taiwan try to boost their sex drive by eating their way through 300 million chicken testicles a year. <laughs> oh, because in Chinese medicine, right? No, do you know this, Donna? Yes, this is fact. <laughs> yeah. In Chinese medicine, you eat the organ that's damaged. Huh? Not your own. No, well, obviously <laughs> not your own. But you but eat you, your own you liver. You do. Yeah, because if you've been out for a big night, plate of liver and onions. Is that right? Mm, it's true. That's a tip for you for the weekend. Thank you very much for that, Donna. Yeah. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, men in Taiwan try to boost their sex drive by eating their way through 300 million chicken testicles a year, <laughs> smuggled in from China. I wonder, where they, I wonder if they smuggle them in down their fronts. Uh, <laughs> uh, it'd be quite odd, that, if you strip you search. Want, you know, for the customs official, he just has a look and suddenly discovers you've got, like, 20 million testicles. <laughs> quite odd. Uh, in the first six months of this year, government officials seized 21 tonnes of chicken testicles, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and that is... Thank you very much, Dan. It doesn't take a fully paid-up member of a rugby club to tell you. That is a lot of testes. Have you ever done anything like that, Stan? He has seen a lot. He's put a lot of deep heat on a lot. <laughs> um, OK, I'm going to get in there. This is, uh, this is my 2CV. Darren turns motor into a channel ferry. It's a quiet news day today, but I can tell you that car nut Darren, Darren Arthur is planning to sail to France in a floating Citroen 2CV. Yay! Have we got this still stored? I don't think we have, but there it is. That's... The floating Citroen 2CV. Um, he says a mechanic Darren has spent three months turning his 20-year-old banger into an ocean-going catamaran, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is one of, uh, uh, There's a lovely quote here. It's about any... Any time British people talk about doing any kind of travel, mm -hmm. it always has to involve cheap booze. <laughs> and you think, why is, he, why is he making the Citroen 2CV? It's obvious, isn't it? He says, it's a standard 2CV with a few modifications. I'm looking forward to the trip and hope to bring back some booze. <laughs> <laughs> booze and bags. That's it. It's amazing how all British trips are just booze cruises. And I think it's very lucky they didn't have hypermarkets in the glory days of exploration when Britain was conquering the globe. Because all that would end up the British Empire would just be a thin line around the end of France. <laughs> That's it, just around Canada, that would be the whole empire. You know, Sir Walter Raleigh returning from, you know, returning back from his exploration, he just goes, what did you discover, Raleigh? Oh, oh. the mini Cronenberg multi-rack mine. <laughs> multi and I bring a 250-gram pouch of old Holborn from the colony <laughs> calendar. That's it, all exploration just stops there. Uh, Livingston, Stella Artois, I presume. That's all he brings back. He's addressed in the Geographical Society. What do you discover in Isle 7, sir? The litre bottle of Baileys with free gift fog. <laughs> yeah, the evacuation free from Dunkirk bus. at the end of the war. I'm starting to think, I wonder if the British troops actually, they didn't, they weren't bothered about the Germans, they just got the booze and thought, let's just go home. <laughs> Get to Dunkirk, back you go, you get to the hypermarket. Um, oats to Scott, I'm going out, I may be some time. 
So leave the van keys under the wheel, please. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting in with the. Uh, this is Formula One. Oh no, this is uh, this is more news on the step split. I'm afraid. Oh, oh. it was predicted here first, Johnny. They, it you was predi that I predicted it here weeks first. Weeks ago. I predict this tour will be their last. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry yeah. to bring you all down. Max, have you heard anything sorry on that? Sorry about that, but I've, I've heard a couple of things, but I can't tell you about it. Max, that. what have you heard? Because Come you, on, Max. You, you go now with Mel B inside Don't play with us. I'm not playing, but there could be some bad news on its way. <gasps> Max Beasley, who is in with the Spicers, Spice who, who are in with the world of music, who know... Who have a connection with Steps. Yeah. Steps are connected to the world of music, tenuously. Uh. Um, but anyway, uh, this is, this is uh, news of the panic. I was saying, go out, get your Steps CDs, get tickets for their tours, because yeah. this could be the last. This is uh, surveillance it sold out yesterday. in uh, 3am. It sold out yesterday. Yeah. Of course it did. Bill Oddie was seen buying a Steps album in HMV Oxford Circus. There you go. Call us, Bill. What do you know? There Come you on. Go. There you are. Uh, this is uh, Michael Douglas. You know I'm increasingly uh, um, intrigued by his metamorphosis from Hollywood star uh, to Son of the Valleys. Uh, <laughs> Michael Douglas uh, has bought himself a wedding ring made of Welsh gold so he can tie the knot with Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> this is a guy who's used to, you think he's used to That's shopping really at sort of lovely. Tiffany's and the great, sort of the very wealthy kind of American big shops, but he's just been to, uh, he's got a traditional uh, Celtic gold band from a tiny shop in Welsh seaside town of Aberystwyth. Oh, isn't it? He's just been into a little craft, little curio shop, you see. Very nice. um, but the, it says here the star reported to be sporting the beginnings of a moustache and wearing a cut off rugby shirt with tattoos on each forearm. <laughs> <laughs> Picked up other gifts for his Hollywood pals. A set of tea towels with dragons for Marlon Brando. He's gone. A barometer egg timer inlaid in slate for Kathleen Turner. And a Max Boyce comedy cassette box for his father, Kirk. Oh, yes, you'll see. Um, Pope John Paul uh, <laughs> prayed yesterday for pizza people. Pizza chefs and pizza people. Uh, he thanked 2,000 dough nuts from around the world. It was World Pizza Makers Day. He's written a special prayer. I have it here. Can we have that music up a bit? Oh, that's lovely. Our bakers, who art in dominoes, crusty be thy pan, deliver us some anchovies and extra be our olives. May thy arrivals be within 30 minutes and protect thy delivery boy from muggings, for though he walks through the estate of evil, he carries no more than five pounds change. <laughs> Thine be the toppings, the cheese and the pineapple. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, this is another Welshman here. Hungry Grand Benny. <laughs> 27, eats 42 pounds of Brussels sprouts a week <laughs> in South Wales. You might, again, if he bumps into Michael Douglas, <laughs> he'll make him. Can anybody eat 42 pounds of Brussels sprouts, you see? <laughs> Michael, you see? Michael's just like, what's happening to me? I'm walking down a seafront oh. in Wales and I've got Grand Berry farting. <laughs> no, no, Michael, you must have some of my sprouts, you see? <laughs> Michael. Oh, all my face, uh, I used to work in a bakery. We used to get the strangest messages people want on cakes. Uh, this is in well, the you sun. You used to it's, work in a bakery? No, this is a news. That's I'm reading a letter. Because you have done most. I things. have done most things. Yeah. Actually, no, I have worked on bakers briefly. Okay. Yes, I have done two weeks of baking. Might yeah. have. <laughs> I used to work in a bakery, and we uh, we got used to the strange messages people wanted on cakes. One man phoned to cancel a birthday cake. When we told him he uh, wouldn't get his money back, he decided to go ahead with the change to the happy birthday darling original we asked for. We delivered the cake, and they iced it with. Get out by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you know what? I'm going to do the but puns now, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the puns. Yes. It's from the gods. It, now, when you buy uh, a certain amount of packs of Carlsberg Special Brew, you get a free t shirt. Oh, oh. even more Gift reason to drink. Gifts from the gods. <laughs> Because I tell you what, if they had been drinking Carlsberg Special Brew when they actually built the pyramids, they'd still be well under construction. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be on about layer one. OK, here we go. Pun down. Mirror. At least three months of serious train delays are feared. Oh, it's, well, it's, a, meek, it's a weak pun, but the pun, it, it's in the pun down nonetheless, on a weak pun down. The pun says, boy, I built that. Late Britain. Oh, Great Britain, because... Uh, <laughs> <it's over. laughs> Uh, Guardian, repairmen are called out to fix the revolving door of Port Cullis House, the MP's new luxury office complex. Obviously, they have less work to do, so they need nicer offices to relax in. Uh, pun says, <laughs> wanted spin doctor. Ah, uh, the spinner. Uh, mm. He's revolved. Because <laughs> the door. Cause the... Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Mirror. Number one pun, the plaster cast of Mr. Spock's ears go up for auction. <laughs> <laughs> the pun says, 
to Mouldly Go. Oh. Francis here. Oh, Joe, we're back right, in a couple of seconds. Max Beasley's here. Carl Fogarty's here. That's Donna Ayer is here. And you're here. Thank you very much. Back in a couple of seconds. Do not